folks, we are well into the Christian season of Epiphany, which began on January the 6th, in which believers of our Lord and Savior commemorate the manifestation of God. In our Christian belief, we come together to commemorate the first two occasions on which Jesus' divinity was manifested. First, when the three kings or magi visited the infant Jesus in Bethlehem, and when John the Baptist baptized him in the River Jordan. Folks, the word epiphany in general terms means showing forth, a revelation, if you will. For us Americans, we are well within one year on the liberal trans configuration to undermine and undo what our founding fathers so perfectly created for our country. And for many of us, our faith has been replaced by fear. And our freedom will pay the ultimate price. Welcome to another episode of the Closet Conservative Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Wright. Let's get started. This past week, Freedom won a significant battle against the Biden administration. And as they were dealt a significant blow by the Supreme Court, which ruled that the federal government's COVID-19 vaccine and testing mandates for private businesses was unconstitutional and overstepped the bounds of the Occupational Health and Safety Administration. While this ruling was a victory for conservatives, it cannot overshadow that the evil that Biden and his fellow liberals continue to conjure within the halls of Congress. Democrats continue to attempt to put an end to the Senate filibuster to nationalize elections, a strategy that would ensure continued fraud and an unstoppable sequence of events that would bar any future Republican president or congressional majorities. Despite the steady progress of state-based reforms, now come President Biden and Senate Democrats with plans to use the memory of January the 6th, 2021, as an attempt to another federal power grab over our state elections and drive a wedge further into our divided nation. On the one-year anniversary of the January 6th attacks, former Vice President Mike Pence's opinion article published in the Washington Post clearly laid on the plan of both Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Pence clearly defines that under the Constitution, elections are largely determined at the state level, not by Congress, a principle that he states he upheld on January the 6th without compromise. The only role of Congress with respect to the Electoral College is to open, present, and record votes submitted and certified by the states. No more. No less. The notion that Congress would break the filibuster rule to pass a law equally a wholesale takeover of elections by the federal government is inconsistent with our nation's history and an effort to our Constitution structure. Pence goes on to say that Democrats in Congress don't like the many ways that states have governed over the past year. And in fact, Senate Majority Leaders Chuck Schumer of New York recently compared Senate state officials to violent insurrectionists who stormed the Capitol because they had the audacity to pass legislation designed to eliminate voter fraud. Biden and the Democrats' plan advancing in Congress would massively increase opportunities for election fraud further eroding the confidence in our elections and deliver an irreversible victory for the radical left. So, what are Biden and his liberal comrades cooking up in Congress? Well, I'm going to tell you. And according to Pence, states would be forced to adopt universal mail-in ballots to provide same-day voter registration, online voter registration, easier voter registration through motor vehicle department offices, and a minimum of 15 days of early voting. Duplicate voter registration records would abound states' voter ID requirements and would be dramatically weakened. And anyone, 
including undocumented people, would simply sign a sworn written statement claiming to be eligible to vote, and they would be permitted to do so. The opportunities for voter fraud would explode. Former Vice President Pence was attacked by Trump supporters during the final days of the administration and leading up to the January 6th attacks on our country. And folks, I'm not here to debate or show favoritism to the former vice president. No, 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 no. But what I am here to say is that he, like so many of our former and current leaders, are deeply concerned with the direction of our country by today's Democrats. Love him or hate him, Mike Pence is correct in his understanding of our country's founding. As he states in his opinion article, when he says, our founders were deeply suspicious of consolidated power in the nation's capital. They are also were rightly concerned with foreign interference if presidential elections were governed by or decided by the federal capital. Those were among the reasons the Constitutional Convention settled on state-based elections and limited the role of the federal government in the election of the nation's leaders. While many of the promises that Biden made during his election campaign have faltered, I consider many of these to be lost battles. But the war rages on, folks. Democrats under the Biden administration will not stop until they can ensure the American future rooted in eternal demise, foregoing any counter-conservative fights for freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a man of faith, not fear. But I'd be lying to you if I said that I'm not fearful for my continued freedom, as you should be as well. No, I'm not fearful of a virus. I'm not fearful of crime, despite its rampant insurgency in liberal-led cities across the country. Rather, I am fearful that for so many in our nation, we have long become a culture of weak puppets whose greed and laziness have been placated on by liberal politicians. In 1994, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos created an online platform that would manifest and epitomize American greed and impulsiveness. And in less than a decade, Americans could order what they wanted when they wanted it and have it delivered to their doorstep with no effort involved. Today, mimicking the sheer genius of people like Jeff Bezos, Biden-led liberals want to model American institutions like federalizing our election process. Exactly the same in which there is little to no effort to cast your ballot or to be involved. There's no standing in line. There's no verification process. There is nothing but the click of a button, and suddenly your ballot, your opinion, matters. Folks, I'm all about responsible change and the ease of processes. But like freedom, nothing should be too easy Nothing in this world is free, and if it is, then it loses its importance. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what today's liberals want to create, a system that makes it easy to ensure their victory, and an unreliable system that lacks validation and security. Everything bought and sold online is ripe for fraud every year. The FTC investigates billions and billions of consumer or consumer fraud within a system designed to satisfy our demand. Personal information is stolen in an instant. And simply put, our greed is responsible for our misery. And taking this step further, many Americans today want everything they can get, but without the work behind it. We expect to have what our neighbors have. And if we cannot afford or obtain it, we expect others to provide it. We expect that it is the government's responsibility and role to pay our mortgages if we cannot, and to send our kids to school and to college, to pay our utility bills, and to send us monthly deposits and checks into our accounts so we can buy whatever else that we want. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you new to the program, wake up. The government's role is not to interfere in your personal life. It is not to mandate vaccines, 
or policies that violate your personal and individual freedoms. The Constitution, and more specifically the Bill of Rights, was so perfectly created by our founding fathers to restrict government, not the people. Today's liberals are aware of this. However, they are banking on that continued American greed and pacifism in a culture consumed by we want what we want and we want it now, which if not controlled, will boot conservatism out of the American way of life and lead our country into the bowels of communism. As Christians, we celebrate this new season of epiphany. God and his son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, has and is before us. His journey foretold. Folks, the demise of our country has also been prophesied. Our founders warned us of a strong federal government. It is up to us to heed that warning before it is too late. You have been listening to The Closet Conservative Podcast.